everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I am super excited because I have partnered with my two best friends in the bookish corner of the world to bring to you something brand new and that is the She Wolf Pack book tag. So we're going to be sharing all about this on our respective social media channels so you'll be able to find more information there as well as in the description box below. I will list all of the prompts and the details and that kind of thing but essentially I should probably start by explaining who is the She-Wolf Pack? So the She-Wolf Pack is just the name of our group chat. <laughs> um, we started out chatting and being friends through our mutual love of books and different other things, but we also connected with each other and got each other's phone numbers once when we were trying to plan an online watch party to watch the latest season of Fuller House about many, many moons ago. It was 2018. <laughs> Via Facebook, we kind of found out that we were all sort of interested in watching the new series and we all kind of had like a love of 90s sitcoms or 90s movies and TV and humor. So we decided to exchange phone numbers and watch Fuller House. And if you've watched Fuller House, then you'll know the three main characters, DJ, Stephanie, and Kimmy, refer to themselves as the She-Wolf pack in the show. After watching the show, we changed our group chat name which we'd originally set up to coordinate the watch party to the she-wolf pack and the rest is kind of history we started texting each other non-stop we became best friends we've been able to visit with each other and plan big summer trips together and they're always fun it's always a good time it's a little bit crazy we think that we are the funniest people in the world and our jokes are always the most hilarious to us but it's a great time and basically they're like my bookish besties i couldn't be in the bookish world without them. Audrey, who is known as Audrey Bow Author on Instagram, and then Alicia, who a lot of you guys are probably really, really familiar with because she's kind of a big deal. She's for the love of Christian fiction here on YouTube and on Instagram, as well as other places. As far as what is the She-Wolf Pack book tag, we thought it would be really fun to get together for Galentine's, Valentine's, and put together a book tag that is themed around our friendship. The She-Wolf Pack book tag was made in celebration of bookish friendships and the name was inspired by our group chat name and you can also participate in the challenge and tag your own friends to make your own bookish pack or you can participate by doing the tag and answering the following bookish prompts. We really want to see a lot of people get in on this and have fun with this so we're posting versions to YouTube as well as to Instagram. I will be posting some templates in my Instagram stories today and of course the actual written prompts will be in the description box of the this video. There are a lot of prompts, so we should probably get started pretty soon. The prompts spell out She Wolf Pack. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first prompt is the letter S, and that stands for Summertime, a book that takes place primarily during the summer. I actually had a really hard time coming up with a book that specifically took place during the summer, because if I think about it, most books that I read don't tend to mention a specific period of time, or they aren't necessarily grounded in a certain season or like the story isn't tied to that season and I probably I told my friends this is probably my fault because I don't read enough contemporary romance books because I definitely feel like in the contemporary genre a lot of books center around like seasons or holidays or just general vibes and in a lot of historical fiction I don't really have a concept of time other than like a general decade or century. However, I was able to turn to one of my childhood favorite books and childhood favorite authors to find Letters from Camp by Kate Kleist. Now, if you have never read a Kate Kleist book, you are seriously missing out. And to be honest, you are never too old to start. They are a series of, I would say, elementary up to middle grade children's fiction and they are told they are stories that are written via letters and journals and newspaper articles between all of the different characters. They're also hilarious and full of puns and jokes and characters named things like Paige Turner and Barbie Q and just more little like little things like that that make them really funny and fun to read and she's written multiple different series and for the most part they are all written by Kate Kleiss and then illustrated 
created by M. Sarah Kleiss. They are, I believe, two sisters, and I grew up on these books. I would like, they were the first books that I really think I pre-ordered or I convinced my mom to pre-order. We loved the Regarding the Sink series. We loved the 43 Old Cemetery Road series and just anything Kate Kleiss, Trial by Journal. Anything Kate Kleiss I wanted to get my hands on. And this one specifically takes place during a summer camp. And it also has a little bit of a mystery to it, as most Kate Kleiss books do. I loved, 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 loved Kate Kleiss books. So for a book that takes place in the summertime, Letters from Camp, Kate Kleiss, a middle grade summer camp comedy mystery sort of thing. The next prompt is the letter H, which is Happily Ever After, a favorite book with a happy ending. And for this prompt, I chose Like Flames in the Night by Connie Lynn Cassette. And the reason that I chose this book in particular is because it's the end of a series. It's the last book in the Cities of Refuge series. So not only does this story, the story of Tirza and Liam have a happy ending, it's also a happy ending for every other character in the series. So this series kind of follows like one family and different siblings and people in that family. This one just wraps up all of their stories so well. It's my favorite. I love the Cities of Refuge. I love the Cities of Refuge series. I love Mariah and Derek and I love Tirza and I love Eaton and I love every single character in this series so much. And when I tell you book three ended with like a mini cliffhanger that had my jaw on the floor it changed everything I knew about the series. I was so eagerly awaiting this book, the final book, because I wanted answers. And this is just like, if you've ever read a series and you felt like I didn't get enough closure or you wanted more closure, this is the definition of closure for me and the definition of happy ending and just everyone's off living their peaceful life in their peaceful world. And I just, I know the characters are gonna be okay, so. I love this book and I love the Cities of Refuge series and I love pretty much anything that Connie Lynn Cassette writes. The next prompt is the letter E and that is Everywhere You Look, which is of course the full slash Fuller House theme song title, I believe. And that is a book with a setting that you would love to see in real life. And for this prompt, I chose Anne of Green Gables because I really would love to go to Canada one day and visit Prince Edward Island. I just want to go to Canada, okay? I have a really deep desire to go to Canada and a lot of different places in Canada. I don't really get the travel bug very often and I'm very much a homebody, so if I ever did this, it would be like a huge thing even though I'm not even leaving the continent. I would love to see a lot of parts of Canada, but especially Prince Edward Island because vibes. Do you, ugh, ugh. small side note, I'm currently helping my mom go through and organize all of her old photos and photo albums and different things. And one of the things I've been going through is a trip my mom took to Canada and Prince Edward Island, like before I was born, before my time. And she went with, I believe her parents and her sister to Prince Edward Island. And I've been looking at all of her pictures and all of the like places that my mom went to when she was there. And I just want to go there too. Like it just, just it's, mm. It sounds really fun. Moving on to the word wolf, the next prompt is W, which stands for Watch Party, a book that would make a good movie or TV series. Now, aside, I really struggled when picking a book for this prompt because as I was going through my shelves, I'd pick out a book and I'd say, this would make a great movie or TV series. And then I'd remember it already had an adaptation, which not to say we couldn't get multiple adaptations of the same book as a movie or a series, but my top picks had already been made. No wonder, go figure. They were probably made that way for a reason. And then some of the other picks that I had, I wanted to use for different prompts in this tag, just so that I'm being like, you know, creative and I'm not picking a book that's already been made or something like that. I chose my own books because I, for one, think it would be really fun as an author, possibly a little bit painful, but really fun as an author to see your books brought to life. And if I could like, if I had millions of dollars and a dream world and a dream scenario and just dream wealth of resources, I would totally make these into not a movie and not a TV series, but a limited mini series that has like a definitive beginning, middle and end. It doesn't necessarily stretch on for too long. So you don't have to add too much to the story to keep it going for multiple seasons, it wraps itself up nicely. It's as long as a TV show, it's longer than a movie, but it like 
it's contained. So I would love to see my two books, Jerusalem's Daughter and Antioch's Daughter, which are historical fiction set during the first century, ancient historical Christian fiction. I would love to see these made into a miniseries. The next prompt is the letter O. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, that is Oh What Fun, a Christmas book. And for this one, it's no surprise, I could have picked a lot of books and different like contemporary Christmas books or historical Christmas books or biblical fiction Christmas books, different genres. I chose a classic and I chose A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens because I just love A Christmas Carol. If you saw my Christmas series that I did here on YouTube, I posted a whole video series the entire month of December where I made a new Christmas video every other day leading up to Christmas. If you watch that, you'll know that there is nothing I love more when it comes to Christmas movies than adaptations of A Christmas Carol. Mickey's Christmas Carol, the musical A Christmas Carol, animated Christmas Carol, anything that says A Christmas Carol on it, if it's an adaptation of A Christmas Carol, I want it. I want to read it. I want to watch it. I want to consume it. I don't know what it is. I've just always enjoyed, since I was a kid, the, the, the story of A Christmas Carol and the ghost of Christmas past and present and future. It's just, it's a favorite. So of course I had to say A Christmas Carol for this prompt. The next prompt is L, Laughter is the Best Medicine, a book that made you LOL or laugh out loud. For this prompt, I have to expose myself and admit in front of Alicia for the love of christianfiction.blogspot.com that I have not actually yet finished please don't hurt me. The Hawthorne House series by Christy Ann Hunter. I have only read the first three books and I'm going to finish them this year, I'm sure. I can't imagine myself not, although saying that now, it may come back to bite me, especially since the whole of the internet will now be keeping me accountable on that. But for a book that made me laugh out loud, I had to say pretty much all three of the books that I've read in the Hawthorne House series by Christiane Hunter, specifically the first one, A Noble Masquerade, and the third one, I believe this is the third one, yeah, An Uncommon Courtship. Both of these, for vastly different reasons, had scenes or moments or dialogue bits that just had me like literally rolling on the floor, unable to contain myself because I was so amused by the story and where it was taken. And especially by this book, I knew the characters so well that there were just little things and I was just like, I can't, I can't take it. This one too, honestly, there's just moments where I literally had to like, cover my face with my hand because it would have been disruptive and Christy Ann Hunter books. That's all I'm gonna say, Christy Ann Hunter books. So there you go. And then for the prompt letter F, female friendships, a book with strong female friendships or a friend group that you would love to be in, I chose Lioness by Barbara M. Britton. And this is because it is book one in her Daughters of Zelophehad series, which is a series about a group of sisters in the Bible. Their story is real. Their story is in there. And it's just their incredible journey. And this group of sisters, they all have unique personalities. It's they all have like interests and different things that they want or grapple with throughout the series. It's a lot like Little Women, but biblical fiction. And I believe in the last book of this series, there is a line about like, I, I wish I could be a daughter of Zelophehad. And it's true because these characters, they're just so fun. And I love their sisterhood. I love their sisterly bond. I love how they're all like fighters, you know, like they, not like that they're, you know, fighting women or that they fight with each other or th with other people, but they fight against adversity and trouble when it comes their way to remain strong and continue to be faithful. And I just really felt like this book was very inspirational. The series was very good. Barbara is the best, so. Lioness. And now we are to the last word, pack. And the first prompt for this is the letter P, which stands for photograph, a book with pictures or illustrations inside. And while I could have chosen a number of illustrated children's books for my shelves or special edition books that I have on my shelves or even comic books that I have on my shelves. I once again, please forgive me, chose my own books, but specifically I chose the hardcover editions. And yes, this one has a little sticker on it. It was an accident. I was testing an autographed book sticker thing and 
didn't work. So I'll have to get a new one, but these are my personal copies, so it doesn't matter. These are the special edition hardcover editions of my books. So they are different than the paperbacks. If you were curious, this is what the front looks like. And this is what the spines look like. And this is what the backs look like. And these are quotes from these respective books. The hardcover editions are different than the paperback versions for a couple of reasons, mainly because in the back, they come with a Bible study included that separates the book into chapters with different Bible study reading plans and devotionals in it, and then space for journaling. But at the front of the book, there's also exclusive to the hardcover, character art. So this is the character art. So this is the character art of Asa and Shamira from Jerusalem's Daughter. And this is the character art for Libby and Cassius from Antioch's Daughter, who are, not gonna lie, my current obsession. They are my Roman Empire. If you like collecting special edition books or you like getting books with character art, I would highly recommend getting those versions of my books because who doesn't love good bonus content, but I also occasionally give away character art stickers and different things like that as well. So there's other opportunities to get the character art in your hands. However, the hardcovers are out there. Just saying. The next prompt is the letter A, which stands for art, a book where the characters craft something artistic. And there were actually a couple of books on my shelves that I thought would fit for this prompt, but when I was going back through them to try and find like the specific excerpt to back up what I thought I remembered because I didn't want to mess it up and misquote or misremember a book. I really struggled to find those. So instead, I went for a book that I could very easily find and that was Tessa Afshar's Jewel of the Nile. This book's main male character, his name is Theo, and he's made a few appearances in a few different Tessa Afshar books, but this was definitely his story where he was the main male character. This might be a mild spoiler, so feel free to like click ahead a few seconds, but He's very witty, he's very sharp, he's very funny and hilarious, and everyone loves Theo. But he's also got like a softer artistic side kind of, and he doesn't necessarily craft something, like he's not a painter, but he does at one point write a poem as a gift to the female main character. You can see I've like dog-eared it because I've referred to it in the past to like find it and then refer back to it, but at a like very emotional point in the story, he writes this poem and gives it to the female main character. And it's just very emotional and it's called Angel Scars and it's beautiful and poignant. And that's something that I would say is very artistic. And I was 100% certain that I could find that excerpt in the book. So Jewel of the Nile by Tessa Afshar. The next prompt is the letter C, Christian fiction favorite, a story that displays what you love about the genre. And for this book, I could have picked a myriad of other books. I had like a few actually pulled out that I was like, this one's perfect, or this one's like the pinnacle, or this one's the peak. But I decided to go instead with a book that I read many, many years ago that was one of the first Christian fiction books that I ever read and that had a profound and significant impact on my life. And that is When Calls the Heart by Jeanette Oak. This is a book that I discovered in my teenage years and really was like a pivotal influence on um, my faith journey at the time. You know, I was going through a lot of things and I was dealing with a lot of grief. And this book just taught me a lot about or this series really taught me a lot about being a woman of faith and what it looks like to pursue God in daily life and in difficult circumstances, as well as like abundant and joyful circumstances. And it kind of inspired me and just made me realize the kind of woman that I wanted to be, especially as I reread it multiple times in high school and in college. So this book to me definitely represents like what I love about the genre in that it's powerful storytelling that inspires you or teaches you something or just imparts a bit of wisdom on you in the form of story. And that's what I love the most is reading things that uplift or edify or change me in some way. These books definitely did that, as well as others like The Pharaoh's Daughter by Misu Andrews and Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers and Counter with the Stars by Connie Lynn Cassette. But if we're going back to the beginning, this book, the Canadian West series, as well as the Love Comes Softly series, just kind of changed me and gave me a lot to think about and were very inspiring to me at a very young age. So that's why I'm going with those. And now we're coming to the last prompt, and arguably the most Valentine's Day prompt on the list, and that is the letter K for kiss, a book with a kiss scene. And for this prompt, I honestly couldn't think of a better book 
to read during the month of Valentine's Day. Then Providence by Barbara M. Britton. This book's memorable for so many ways, but I think first and foremost is because it's a love story and I love love stories and I would recommend this one. And there were a few others that I was thinking of, but I just kept coming back to this one because Hannah and Gil. Need I say more? Honestly, I think it's the wordless reviews that tell you the most. So those are all of my answers for the She Wolf Pack book tag. If you would like to do this tag yourself, consider yourself tagged. You'll find the prompt and everything in the description box below this video, as well as more information on my Instagram and social platforms, as well as Alicia's from For the Love of Christian Fiction .blogspot.com, at For the Love of Christian Fiction here on YouTube and Instagram, and Audrey Bodine, audrey.bo.author on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to tell me, do you have a she-wolf pack or equivalent of that, a friend group that you really love? I would love to hear about that. And if you do, maybe celebrate Galentine's Valentine's by sending them this video and telling them that you were thinking of them. Thanks again so much for watching, and I will see you in my next next video. Bye!